Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. What we're going to talk about today is that most traders who are struggling specifically uh, believe that they have this problem with trading losses, uh, meaning they just can't stand them, they don't want them, uh, and they think that the losses are actually the reason that they're not making money. Maybe you're one of them. I know I was when I first started trading. I hated losses. Uh, but here's the thing. If you understand how to trade, if you understand how to develop an edge, if you understand how to use that edge, losses aren't the problem. <clears throat> losses are a part of what we do. What you have is a winning problem. A winning problem means getting to the other side where you earn enough money on your winners that the losses are nothing more than just a part of what we do. And that's really also a mindset as well, because if you go into your trading completely understanding, completely acknowledging the fact that you are going to have losses, which again is the definition of an edge, um, then you know if you happen to have a trade that's a loser, you're like, ah, no big deal, that's a part of what we do. Here's what I wanna take that a little bit deeper. Uh, oh, by the way, if you find these videos helpful, definitely click down and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Plus you'd get updates. Uh, and if you find the videos helpful, give us a thumbs up. But just as important, if you have questions about anything that we talk about, please feel free to leave a comment below the video. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, so here's the question. Here's what I want to talk about. We have something uh, that I teach. It's a core part of what I do called well bid and well offered. Uh, and well, let's just use well bid. So it's a buying opportunity. And essentially what well bid means is that smart money, deep pockets has done something new. They've created something new. And this, it's one of the most simple but powerful things that you could notice on a chart. And essentially what we're talking about is, and I'll, I'll actually, you know what, I'll go really old school and I'm gonna use these two, we'll go to the chart in a second, but I want you to have a really solid visualization. If you could imagine this candlestick was yesterday or, or a previous hour, right? But let's just use the daily candlesticks. So let's say that's the previous day and let's say that is today. So what happens here is, the, this second candlestick is creating higher highs and higher lows. And that's so important, I can't even describe it. Essentially what happens is if we're saying over a six and a half hour period, which is the full, a full trading day in the stock market, smart money, deep pocket, held that stock higher. So in other words, regardless of how much selling there was, they held that stock higher and they created new highs outside of yesterday's price action. So higher highs and higher lows compared to yesterday. It's so meaningful and so powerful, but most traders don't do that. Most traders are looking to catch a bottom as opposed to saying, which stocks do the smart money already have commitments in? Now here's, here's where it gets um, amazing. I, I, don't know if I don't know if there's any other way to put it. Your job now and, and what, we're, what we're working towards is a phrase that I use a lot in, in our uh, masterclass, which is trade expectation. Trade expectation is what are the odds of hitting your profit target versus your stop loss? And we spend a lot of time building arguments. And this, this works for day trading, swing trading, longer term position trading between quarters, uh, between earnings reports, which got a ton of those this week. Essentially, what it comes down to is the better job you can identify a stock that already has smart money activity, that already has deep pockets making a commitment to that stock, then it's as simple as finding a spot to get involved, managing risk where there's still profit potential. So the first part of that we're talking about is order flow. How obvious has the order flow been? Are you looking at a stock that you put in a screener and just yesterday it was up 10% for argument's sake? which is kind of normal in these market conditions, which is just crazy that in itself. It was it one day, it was up yesterday. Was it two days? Was it one week? Was it two weeks? Was it one month? Was it two months? How far back can you look and say smart money is doing something obvious in this stock? The second part, how recently have they been doing that? And how many consecutive days, weeks, and months have they been doing that? Now consecutive weeks and months is incredible. Consecutive days is incredible too. However, there is a point where the deal, no matter how obvious it is, is no longer worth it. So in other words, you're buying a house in a really nice neighborhood, but you're buying it at the right price. It's not a discount. Maybe it's not extended. Maybe it's not overpriced, 
But if you buy that thing looking for appreciation, you're not going to get it. It's probably not going to go down that much against you, but certainly not going to go up that much. So in other words, if this is where you can get it and you want to sell it up here, if at the time you go to look at it, it's all the way up here already, um, it's still a good house. It's still a good neighborhood, but you're not going to get appreciation. You're probably going to have to wait a little bit for that stock to or that house to calm down a little bit. Maybe the conditions to change. Maybe the neighborhood needs to get a little nicer. Uh, or maybe a new uh, project comes in that boosts the value. So what we talk about that, we're actually looking at a trade like that now where it pushes up the profit potential has uh, what we call saturated itself. That's what we call a saturation play. Uh, and then you got to wait for a pause before the next push. So all of these pieces of building the argument go into creating winners. They go into first setting up great ideas. So if the worst thing that happens is that you are in the best neighborhood and you bought a stock, uh, a house at the right price, but it, it, the odds of it going down aren't that good. So you're okay there, but the odds of going up, you need some more time. You need to now determine is, is it worth your time to sit and have all your money invested in that one stock at this point that is good, has reached, is obvious, right? And do you want to wait for the next move or do you want to find the move that's going up right now? which means that you go back to your watch list and you now take a look at stocks that have deep pocket activity that made higher highs, higher lows, but you're catching them at what we call the optimal entry. So again, this is so simple. If you could just, again, just have in your mind these, these two markers, higher highs and higher lows, and think about how many different stocks are you personally trading right now where there's no commitment by smart money. There hasn't been any commitment by smart money, but you're placing a trade. Those are lower probability situations for follow through. You're essentially hoping it follows through without a valid argument, without proof from the market that already deep pockets are involved. So I want to show you just two stocks to really bring it home and give you a thought process of are you avoiding lower probability situations first? Because once you learn to avoid situations that do not have higher probability of reaching a profit target, that instantly makes you a better trader because now you're not throwing money away, you're not tying up capital, you're not frustrated, you're not losing your confidence. But what if you're on the other side where you are now only allocating capital where it's obvious, only allocating capital where there is a higher high and a higher low from the day. Now here's the last part of that. You could find a stock that has higher highs and higher lows over uh, three days. For argument's sake. So that's, that's kind of cool, right? The last three days, smart money, deep pockets, created higher highs once, twice, three times, right? Higher lows. But that is happening right after six weeks of selling. So you clearly have lower lows, lower highs on the daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame. So now, you, now, now it's a different argument. Now it's a different, where is that happening? Are you having high, uh, what we call well bid in the midst of obvious buying by the deep pockets? Or do you have well bid after it's going straight down for three months? So now you have three days versus three months. Which one do you think is, is stronger at this moment? The three days could be the start of something new, but it's not enough time. So do you start to see now, not only do you need to recognize, which is super simple to do, are you looking at a stock that is well bid? How long has that been well bid? And does it make sense to hop on board now? Or do you need to see a little more proof, meaning, Three days is enough. Maybe you want to see two weeks. So two weeks represents 10 days worth of trading. Now, 10 days where on the weekly chart, so if you can imagine this is two days, what if this was two weeks? So now you have that. Now you have higher highs and higher lows for two weeks. So now that means over 10 days, deep pockets held that up for the second week and created new highs for the second week. Now you're starting to build an argument where you say, I'm not, I don't need to pick a bottom. They're already doing it. I just need to find a spot to hop on board. So I want to point out two charts over time so you can just get a feel for whether or not you're getting involved where right now that's the right price. You might have a good stock, but it's the right price and the appreciation, you're going to have to wait a lot of time for it versus finding something that's consistently creating higher highs and higher lows and is not going sideways. There's an imbalance right now that that sector is hot or that neighborhood is hot. So we're just going to take a quick look really just to give you visuals, right? So first we're gonna take a look at AMD. Now AMD uh, over the last year or so has been very strong. So if we go all the way back to 
uh, let's say here, we we'll go back to the Jan January of 2020 to where we are now in December, uh, January 2021, you can see the stock has traveled pretty cleanly, right? But let's take a look at the price action now. If we look at this very large well-bid candlestick, <clears throat> which hit this area where sellers did something significant and you can see it went well offered quickly, lower lows and lower highs between these two candlesticks. The stock has not been able to take out this level since then and it's kind of just going sideways. So if we look here from the beginning of December, this stock is trading between 90 and let's just say 97.50. That's kind of the right price right now. Sure, maybe you can justify buying 90, you know, there's channeling stocks and that kind of thing, but at the same time, you can clearly look at the stock and say nobody right now over time, no deep pockets are pushing this to new levels. It's basically sitting in this window. So if we zoom out a little bit more, you can see now on the weekly chart that the well bid is not consistent. Okay, so it went well bid here, higher highs and higher lows. Then it paused for a week. Then it went well bid again but then it went well offered, well offered, well bid, giant reversal, and then into a consolidation to well offered. So it's not textbook like this. So you see the difference here? This is clean, this is not. So if we go to one other chart, so, so let's, be, let's stay here for a second. So what we're saying here is the odds of follow through are not as clear. The odds of follow through have a lower probability because that's the right price right now. If we go to something like Roku right now, and again, don't let the dollar amount of the stock affect what we're teaching you. It doesn't matter if it's a $20 stock or a $400 stock. You can see the consistency of it pushing in a particular direction. And especially if you see it on the weekly chart, you can see over weeks it was happening. So what I'm gonna challenge you to do right now is find some stocks. If you have some questions about this, find some stocks, put those stocks in the comment and say, am I seeing this well bid, do I understand what I'm looking at? Now, this is only the first piece. What we're doing right now is eliminating or reducing dramatically getting involved at the right price. You wanna get involved where there's a, an imbalance, not when it's the right price. So if you see higher highs and higher lows, which again, we teach this uh, in our webinars all the time. It's a, it's a very uh, powerful concept, but one that you must actually take action on because seeing it and using it isn't the same thing. Then that last step, which is really what we kind of do in the boot camp, we can't let you all the way behind the corner, the curtain, uh, is to really understand how to time entries into that and then how to manage winning trades. So this is one of the most powerful things you can do. We had some good questions uh, over the weekend that, that kind of brought up this, this, uh, this topic, uh, which is turning the corner to start, stop losing and then start understanding how to make money. This is by far understanding which stocks are well bid and how long they've been well bid. Uh, easily, 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 one of the fastest ways to lose less. And then you work to get to the other side. We're actually making more, bringing it all the way back to the beginning of the video, where once you start to lose less, you start to understand which stocks have the greatest profit potential and the odds of reaching that profit potential. Um, that's when the losses don't matter as much anymore, uh, because now you're making what you're supposed to on your winner and your losses are smaller and reasonable in exchange for how much your trading company actually does make money. So if you have questions about this, definitely leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone.